Hi, this is Stephen with a short video about market size and how to calculate it. This is a deck with some fictitious or mock numbers, so please don't take the actual numbers seriously, the formulas, and how we apply them. I would appreciate if you did take seriously. Calculating market size is a very relevant skill for many reasons for entrepreneurs business managers, marketing people. If you're going to enter a market, that is often based on understanding how big the market is, so you can have a realistic projection of whether you can get payback. Same thing applies for manufacturing. Do you buy some equipment? Is it worth it to do it? Should you co-pack, etc. Uh, resource allocation is also impacted. In other words, Bigger markets tend to, you know, attract more investment worthy dollars. But at the same time, the downside of that is that bigger markets tend to have a high risk in terms of big dollar defenders. In other words, bigger players tend to gravitate towards big markets. They don't leave them open for long. And you will know that if they're not playing there now and it's a big market, they may very well be playing there soon. There are two methods to calculate market size top-down and bottom-up. In terms of the top-down method of calculating, this is usually used by bigger companies and companies that have access to costly databases, and Nielsen, uh, you know, uh, and other big Dunhumby, IRI, etc. To calculate market size using the top-down method, you take the biggest market and then slice it up. In other words, Take the overall category, multiply by the percent that's playing in your segment, multiply that by the percent that are you know, legal to reach, and the sub-segment, and your reachable channel. You'll end up with a slice of a slice of a slice of a slice. Allow me to suggest that this top-down example is something you could freeze the frame on and walk through. But that's basically all we're doing, is taking the big market, 2.5 billion, which seems like, oh, the temptation might be to say, oh, with a market that big, it's got to be a great big opportunity for us. No, we're talking about a segment of that and then a sub-segment and then the percent who are likely to be reached and then the percent buying our kind of product or interest in our kind of product and the percent shopping in our kind of channels that we can reach. In other words, a slice of a slice of a slice of a slice. This one ends up at a market size of 86 million. That is, of course, an estimate. So here's an example you may try. Please give it a try, because until you practice doing this and getting used to how a big number ends up being sliced down to a small number, whether it's units or dollars, it's important to be aware that this is a pretty common method of sizing a market, especially if you're with a larger organization. Here is the solution, if you will, to the previous page, but I hope that's matching the number that you got. Of course, I could have made a mistake too. Maybe you can check my work by trying it on your own. Here's another example you could try for Dell, a gamer dedicated laptop, for example. All these numbers are fictitious. This is only to get you used to the concept of taking the big market and then slicing it, slicing it, slicing it, going from the top down. And here is my suggested solution to that particular case. The other method of calculating market size is bottom up. This is more typical for business to business marketing, for example, working backwards from the Scots directory of the number of businesses that partake of, let's say, auto services, etc. It's also used by sales reps, entrepreneurs, and the small businesses that don't have the money for big, costly databases. So that being said, you will still find that Scott's trade directory, in conjunction with the NAICS codes, is often very useful in this case. So is Statista, Chambers of Commerce, etc. To do the bottom up, you're going to work in the opposite direction. You're going to find the relevant population first, whether that's number of consumers in your target group or the number of businesses that are high fit, and then multiply by the percent you can probably reach, 
the volume they buy, the number of purchases. In other words, you're building from the bottom up to a number. It could be a unit number or it could be a dollar number. But here is an example using training style running shoes, working from 28 million adult Canadians who wear running shoes back into the trainer style, back into the mass discount footwear channels, back into the number of pairs per year, etc. In terms of bottom up, here's another example of a sales rep. And this is a very common way and application for bottom up. Many regional sales reps need to think about what kind of channel they're going to pursue, what kind of realistic payback they have. So in this case, if you do the math, please pause the screen and get a sense of what kind of dollar sales this particular rep is thinking about reaching. And I hope you paused that and came out with a market value of just over a half million dollars, which if you think about it, sounds like a lot. But if even if you got 30% share, you'd be looking at a maximum $160,000 at wholesale. Wow, given what a sales rep gets paid and the expenses they involve, I would use this information to change the rep's territory to be a broader territory or a broader geographic territory or potentially expand the types of institutions you would suggest they call upon. Here are a couple more examples of bottom-up examples that you are encouraged to try out. So are two methods better than one? Well, sometimes we use both top down and bottom up to what's called triangulate, some sort of a average-ish in the middle figure. Um, this is useful to find out the sensitivity to certain uh, factors and also to find out if our math and assumptions are even remotely correct. So let's think about the fact that we have now triangulated a market that is somewhere between $86 million and 441, depending on if we're going from top down to bottom up. By the way, those numbers are way far apart. And normally, even if we're estimating, we should get much closer than that. So what we've learned here is that something isn't quite right. Some of our assumptions are a little bit off, and that in and of itself is a good reason to do market size calculations to make sure the relevant metrics are there. Calculating market size is certainly a practical skill for marketers, but keep in mind it can go wrong. If you're using data that is not recent or from the wrong geographic region or applying to a too broad a category or too small a category, you can end up with highly concerning figures. So it's really important to check the crumbs on your data principles. And that is a separate data uh, or separate reporting I've made about how to validate the secondary information that you find. Thanks. If you have questions, reach out.